So today I'm going to talk about e-commerce strategy um, and what it takes to be competitive in the e-commerce space in 2015. So I'm going to cover a lot of broad topics um, and hopefully whether you're a beginner or um, even to, uh, more experienced um, in the e-commerce space, there'll be something here that's that's useful to you. So um, the first thing I want to cover is just kind of the landscape where we're at with e-commerce. Uh, right now, there's well over a trillion dollars in uh, B2C e-commerce sales, and then global B2B e-commerce sales is actually expected to reach potentially six to seven trillion dollars in 2020 and it's it's actually a bigger market than the b2c space that a lot of people don't realize how big the b2b e-commerce space is and e-commerce has been growing about 20 percent per year uh, fluctuates you know around from 15 to 20 percent but uh, it's been pr pretty consistently growing at double digits per year for the past uh, 15 years now. So um, there's over 4 million uh, e-commerce stores, according to builtwith.com. Um, but, uh, you know, built with can be a little bit low sometimes in the numbers. So they're, they're probably a little bit more than that. Um, but those are the ones that really show up and probably have any prominence online. And then there are hundreds and hundreds of e-commerce platforms to choose from. There's always new ones coming out all the time. Um, so I'm going to cover some of those platforms and what to think about when you're when you're choosing a platform. So these are the top five hosted small business e-commerce platforms. Um, Press the Shop is actually both hosted and not hosted. So um, don't uh, just if you've if you've used it for either version, that might be a little bit confusing. I just want to clarify that. Um, Shopify seems to be the clear leader right now in terms of hosted small business e-commerce. Uh, they even claim to have well over 100,000 stores now on their website. The bill with the data uh, is a little bit lower. Um, and uh, they, they seem to have a pretty, pretty fast um, growing user base, um, as does uh, Press the Shop and Big Commerce. Uh, Volusion and Yahoo um, have been around for a pretty long time now, and it seems like you know, Volusion, from the built with data that I've looked at, and the the Outlook Online seems to have kind of a neutral user base, and Yahoo uh, definitely a decreasing user base relative to the other hosted platforms. Um, so the great thing with these hosted platforms is that they have a pretty low monthly cost, and they take care of all the kind of like maintenance and the upgrades and everything that you'd have to all the painful kind of like developer hours that you'd have to either pay for or do yourself if you had um, if you went with a non-hosted option so they can be a great way to save money um, because you know the monthly fees with these platforms are pretty pretty affordable um, the other thing to think about when you're choosing a platform whether it's hosted or non-hosted is the community around it and whether that community is going to be strong in the future um, so you know I would definitely say Shopify and Big Commerce uh, seem to have pretty strong communities around the um, around them as far as a, a hosted platform. Um, but these are all five options that are, are worth looking into for sure. Um, so when you come to the when it comes to the non-hosted platforms, uh, Magento is the clear leader in terms of the top um, e-commerce stores. They have you know approximately you know twenty five percent. Market share, and I think the top uh, million e-commerce websites. WooCommerce technically has a lot more, um, you know, e-commerce websites on on the web, but most of those are not um, very prevalent e-commerce websites. It's just so easy to install WooCommerce as a plugin to WordPress. That uh, and WordPress is so prominent on the web that there's just a ton of WooCommerce stores, but that they're not necessarily making a whole lot of money. Um, so that's why Magento is the leader in terms of the top uh, the top sites, uh, even though there are m many more WooCommerce uh, sites on the internet. Um, so the thing to think about with non-hosted platforms, and a lot of people don't realize this if they're new to e-commerce, is that there is a significant amount of um, development that you need to spend to, to get these sites up and running and, and working the way that you want them to. So don't be fooled by the fact that none of these have licensing fees. Um, if you don't want to spend a lot on a third-party developer or you don't have the time to do the work yourself, you um, you may want to look at some of the hosted platforms. They, they Although they do have monthly costs, there's actually probably less work that goes into getting the, the hosted platform set up uh, than these non-hosted platforms. Um, Magento, I would say, is 
probably the more most scalable and it's 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 a better fit for i think medium size to large businesses and it does have an enterprise edition um but they have the the, the free community edition and they did just launch um small business magento to help businesses get set up with magento that maybe have a, a lower budget um if you're looking for something really simple uh something like open cart or woocommerce is definitely a lot uh, a lot simpler um than than something like magento magento has a lot of enterprise features so it can be pretty overwhelming to someone that's new new to e-commerce um so one of the other things and i mentioned this in the hosted uh, slide is that you do want to think about the user base as well and the community around it um magento and wordpress are great or woocommerce which is the plugin to, to wordpress are great have great communities so they're really a, a strong platform to choose because you're you're going to have a strong um, community that uh, to choose from a lot of developers to work with, um, as well as um, you know a lot of extensions and integrations and products built around the platforms. As far as enterprise uh, solutions, um, there's really five main leaders in the enterprise space: uh, it's Hybris, SAP, Hybris. Um, Demandware, ATG, IBM, WebSphere, and Magento Enterprise. Um, you know the, the enterprise solutions can get fairly expensive. Um, Magento Enterprise is definitely the most affordable. Um, typically, I think you're going to see you know that eighteen thousand dollar approximate uh, licensing cost, starting licensing cost, and then around you know maybe two two hundred fifty thousand dollar implementation cost, which is uh, fairly typical for a Magento Enterprise site. Um, whereas like the Hybris and Demandware and ATG and IBM, um, you know, those can easily get to, you know, you might see a million dollar average, um, implementation. Uh, I believe Demandware, um, is more around $500,000. Um, but you know, with SAP Hybris and ATG and IBM, you know, you, you can be looking at, you know, closer, the high six figure, seven figure numbers as far as implementation costs. So, um, the enterprise platforms are are fairly fairly expensive um, when, when you take into consideration the implementation costs um, of using like a, a solution provider um, Magento Enterprise is, is definitely the most cost effective and, and, and the one platform where you'll probably see much um, less less costly implementations uh, I think Demandware is probably number two to that um, but these are the five main platforms that you're probably looking at if you're in the enterprise space. So the things to think about when choosing a platform, um, you know, responsive and mobile first is, is key. Uh, you really want to make sure that there's a lot of um, mobile options or, you know, responsive design is very prevalent in the platform that you're choosing. Uh, I think at this point, if you're going to build a new website, you have to go responsive or mobile first. You have to be thinking about mobile because it's just growing so fast. And, um, you know, it's already very, very prominent now, and it will be even more so in the future. Um, you definitely want to think about hosted versus non-hosted. Uh, I think there are advantages um, and disadvantages to both. And I think it really depends on on your company and your internal resources and budget you know, whether um, which one makes sense for you and if you want a lot of that customization you might want to think about non-hosted uh, but if you don't you know a hosted option might be might be better um, the flexibility is also important flexibility kind of ties into scalability and the community around it those those two points are important as far as the future growth of your e-commerce store integrations is a big one as well like can you integrate with the other things that you need like a pos system uh, erp um, uh, PIM, like a product information management software, you know, Salesforce or CRM. There's a lot of things you may want to integrate with uh, your website. Um, and the other big things to think about are the implementation costs. Um, what are the typical impl implementation costs for the platform? And then what are the maintenance, maintenance costs? You know, how much is it really going to cost to run your, your site? And a lot of people really underestimate the internal and external resources that are required you know it's not as simple as just oh pay someone to do this to get this done you're probably gonna have to put a lot of time in yourself even if you are using a developer because they don't know everything about your business so you're gonna have to provide a lot of information to them so when it comes to design um you know 
do you want you know responsive design is important to think about are you going to go responsive how are you implementing that you're going to use a framework like foundation or bootstrap or is it going to be a theme that's pre-built to be responsive and it's just important to think about how you're going to implement a responsive um, website um, you know you also want to think about what images you're using are you going to be using new images um, you know it's it's important to have those images um, created in the design process or have them before you move into the design process, whether you're going to go with wireframes or uh, Photoshop mockups or however you're implementing the design. Um, videos are, are pretty big and it's another thing to think about and it's how you want to utilize videos on your e-commerce store. Um, and then the other thing is that are you going to go with like a pre-built theme? A lot of these platforms will have themes that you can choose from, um, but you know the themes may be somewhat restrictive and um, look a little bit templatey, and you may want to go with a custom theme, uh, a custom build, custom design, but that can obviously be a lot more expensive than just using a pre-built theme. Um, so the other thing to think about um, is, you know, how are you going to implement the unique branding elements uh, of your business? Uh, and I think that a lot of that ties into whether you want to use a pre-built theme or custom theme. You can try and kind of like make your brand um, as prominent as possible in a, in a pre-built theme, but um, it's probably easier to, to make your brand stand out if you go with a custom custom design. Um, the product page, the product content, all of that is extremely important in the design process. Um, and the other thing to think about is cross-browser compatibility. Um, are you going to build or design for IE8, some of the older Internet Explorer versions, or are you going to kind of abandon those? That's something to think about um, because there's a lot of things that you can't do with the older Internet Explorer versions. Um, and then, you know, how are you going to make sure that the UI, UX, so the, you know, the user interface and experience of the website is intuitive and, and user-friendly for your for your for your customers? So it's, these are some of the things to, to take into consideration when you're designing a new e-commerce site. Um, development. There's a lot that could go into development. I just wanted to touch some of the some of the basic things. Um, data transfer. If you're going from an old platform to a new platform, it's not something to overlook. That can be pretty time consuming because the data in your old platform may not be set up in the same way that the data is in your new. Um, you know, that the will be in the new new platform. So, um, not something to overlook at all. Um, the other thing is, are you going to be utilizing third party extensions and plugins? Um, you know, how credible are those extensions and plugins? There, there may be complications. Um, a lot of times, the plugins and extensions aren't aren't as easily implemented as um, most people think. Uh, are you going to go with the default search, or are you going to implement new ser search technology? Um, you know, what out of the box features are you utilizing versus how many custom features do you need? Um, these are all things that can make a big difference in terms of the cost of implementing your e-commerce website. Um, the other thing too is a B2B versus B2C e-commerce. There's a lot of functionality there that is um, very different with like, you know, different customer groups and different pricing for different customers with B2B. Um, you're going to want to think about that um, as far as whether your platform can handle that type of uh, B2B e-commerce functionality or not. Um, integrations is another big one. Um, you know, ERP is probably the most common one. Um, payment gateways are obviously usually built into the platform. However, um, they may not actually, you know, you, the, the platform might not have out of the box the, the payment gateway that you need to use. Um, typically something like authorized.net or PayPal is going to be built into the e-commerce platform, but um, if you have a different type of payment gateway that you need to use, it may, it may be something that you have to use, a plugin or extension, or even custom build that feature. Um, but the ERP is definitely the one that we see having the most requests for as far as an integration, because most platforms don't have the connections to all the ERPs out of the box, and uh, a lot of businesses seem to need a lot of help with uh, ERP integration into their e-commerce platform. Um, so it's really important to think about how you're going to integrate the different um, software into your e-commerce site if, if you need to integrate it before you move into into development and uh, move into replatforming. Um, but something like Magento, um, which is a, a great platform for integrating third-party services, into it, um, you know, would be able to handle all these different types of integrations. Uh, 
another big kind of buzzword is omnichannel e-commerce. Um, but it is really important to think about how are you going to get your products out into the different um, sectors like Amazon, eBay. Um, you know, you have your e-commerce website. You can push it to Walmart, Target, Amazon, eBay. Um, they might be coming to your store. They might be buying off some of your social media. Um, you might have a, a strong social media presence that helps you uh, sell as well. So, um, you know, getting your, and, and then obviously there's mobile, tablet, and desktop. So getting your website um, viewed and, and your, you know, basically your shopping uh, experience in as many different channels as possible is is really important to being successful. And you'll see a lot of the bigger companies do a really good job of getting their products in as many different ways in um, in front of their customers. So these are some of the main main ones to think about. Um, another thing that uh, is big is international capabilities. Um, the advantage of e-commerce is that you can open your um, business to a huge uh, range of countries, uh, potentially the entire world, without actually investing the capital in a physical presence. However, um, there are a lot of challenges to that. It's not necessarily as simple as, oh, I'm just going to start selling in every, every country around the world. Um, you have to think about the language, um, making sure your site can be viewed in the different languages so that it's, um, you know, the, the native speaking uh, people of those countries can, can read your, your website. Um, you need to make sure that the inventory, um, there's inventory capabilities in, in all those different areas and it can ship to all of those areas. Um, you also want to have multi-store capabilities so that uh, you may have like a different domain or different like you know .ca for Canada um, versus uh, the regular .com for the U.S. Um, you know you want to make sure that the different um, I, um, IPs maybe in the different countries are viewing those different websites, uh, the different versions of the websites for the different countries. Um, <coughs> you also want to think about payment methods. Uh, a lot of countries and have different preferences over over payment methods, and then you're kind of the the branding and the culture and the marketing around that because uh, you know every country is very different in what they expect um, from a brand, and uh, you may want to think about how you want to market yourself in in the different countries. It might not be the same for each country. So the other thing um, before um you know the next section, I'm going to get started on kind of like acquiring more traffic. You know going through those different uh, methodology for, for getting more traffic. But before you do that, you really want to take the time to get to know your customers. And maybe, you know, the beginning of the year might be a good time um, in 2015 to um, think about who your customers are, what the shopping tendencies are like, what are the competitors doing to get to, um, to reach them? You know, what are they doing on social media? It, it's a great time to look back at uh, last year's trends as well. Um, so I just wanted to give a quick example of, um, you know, acquiring traffic and looking at the difference. Uh, there's really six major traffic channels, and this is a, a customer that we've worked with that, that does a good job of getting traffic um, from the different major channels. And uh, you really want to prioritize those different major traffic channels. So these are the six, tra six traffic channels. Um, so, you know, you have paid, direct, SEO, email marketing, social, and referral. And the challenge really is how do you get traffic from all these different channels and how do you prioritize them? Uh, I think it's really important if, you, if, if you're not already really successful in any of these channels to prioritize them because if you try and get traffic from all of them and you're not really doing well in any of those areas, you're probably going to spread too thin and not really s succeed in any one of those areas. So... I would focus on um, one or two of these if, and try and build them up to be successful before you do move on to all of them. Um, so the ones that I think probably are the best to focus on, if you're especially if you're newer or um, looking for a good ROI, are social, SEO, and email marketing. Um, if you're B2C, I would definitely say Facebook can be a great tool. However, if you're B2B, um, that, that may not be the case. Um, it, it, it might not be as effective if you're a B2B. So you really have to think about what type of business you are and where which one of these channels makes sense for your business. With direct, uh, there's a ton of things you can do. Um, 
promotions are obviously a big one. People know that there's always a promo- a new promotion every day on the site. They're most likely going to go more frequently straight to the site rather than searching. Um, even direct mail um, can influence online. I noticed uh, actually the other day I got some mailers from Papa John's that were exclusive to the web. Um, so you may start seeing that more frequently now where retailers will start doing, um, you know, uh, coupons that are exclusive to the web to force people to, to, you know, maybe sign up or create an account for, for their website. Um, contests are a great way to get direct traffic, loyalty rewards, um, you know, some sort of rewards points, in-store promotions, um, that may be able to promote the website, um, daily deals, exclusive deals, free giveaways. Um, so th- these are just some, some methods to potentially increase direct traffic. Promotions um, are are huge as far as in- achieving more direct traffic. So um, I think it's really important to experiment with different types of promotions um, and really try and keep it simple. One of the things I've noticed is that uh, if you have just kind of a straightforward, simple promotion, that can be a lot more effective than some sort of complicated promotion. You just want to make it as easy as possible for your customers to buy. Uh, and, and a shipping one or, you know, buy one, get two free, something like that, um, 20% off, something, some sort of simple promotion like that. It can go a long way. Um, you know, this is just an example of holiday-themed promotion, so um, that's another great way to do promotions is, is something relevant to the times, you know, whether it's spring or there's always something going on. It could be a local event. Um, I would really take the time to, to get creative with your promotions and, and tie them into something that resonates with your customers. Um, the other thing is to make sure that you have promotions on almost, I mean, I, I would really say at every point that a customer is going through your site that they're aware of a promotion. Um, so you may have something on the homepage. This is an example of a banner ad. So when any, anyone's on a uh, a category or a product page, they're always seeing this this banner of the promotion. Um, checkout promotions are big. I think Vista Print does an amazing job of promoting products throughout the checkout process, and that's something that I think a lot of e-commerce sites do not do well. So it's an area that you probably could grow um, by by utilizing uh, checkout promotions. Social, um, I really think it's important to, to have a presence on all the major social platforms. Um, and obviously, I would pick put a focus on one um, before spreading too thin, but at least being on the all of the platforms I think is important. And then uh, I would pick one or two to focus on and, and become successful at before you move on to the other ones as far as spending a lot of time and energy. Um, I would use something like Buffer, BuzzSumo, uh, those... Uh, Buffer is amazing for just quickly sharing content and scheduling content for the entire week. Uh, BuzzSumo can help you find content, um, relevant content to your industry. Um, a thing that I've seen very successful is running contests. Um, I think Facebook allows you to run contests. And I've seen a lot of customers at companies do uh, contests on Facebook and then build their email list with those contests by having people opt into the contest. And that uh, I've seen that be, be very successful. And it's also Facebook and these, these social platforms have really become pay to play. Um, you really need to start experimenting with advertising. It's not like what it used to be where you could hit like 30% of your likes with a, with a post. You really need to pay to, to get people to see your posts. Um, so Coca-Cola, as you can imagine, has an insane amount of, um, likes and, um, you know, they do a great job of just promoting videos and all sorts of different kinds of interesting content that get thousands of likes and shares and, uh, comments. So it's really important to try and build up, uh, you know, post engaging content, something that's interesting, not just, not just overselling yourself, uh, on your social media, um, accounts. SEO, um, I would really, I highly suggest having a, a platform that tracks your rankings. Um, you know, Google what, Analytics and Google Webmasters, they're great for, you know, looking at your traffic and analyzing the data, but something like Moz or Advanced Web Rankings or Conductor or Raven Tools, 
those platforms can actually allow you to evaluate your rankings on a weekly basis um, or even daily basis. And it's a great way to see, okay, I was ranked here this week, I'm ranked here the next week, and see kind of the trends and if you're moving in the right direction or not for the keywords you want to rank for. Um, and so, I would, and then one of the other things that I see a lot of companies fail to do is have a content strategy and create quality content on a consistent basis. So if there's one thing that I would suggest is is find a way to create quality content on a consistent basis. Uh, I know e-commerce sites tend to th focus a lot on the products and things like that, but you really should have a blog or some sort of content strategy, even though you're an e-commerce site, maybe not a traditional um, content-based website. Um, so this is an example of just keeping track of rankings, and you can see how things are going up and down um, in this column, and uh, you can see that the, the position on Google here. It's just so important to see where you are at because you know maybe maybe three months ago you were number thirty and you're going up to number five. Like you're obviously doing the right things, and if you see yourself kind of falling on a consistent basis, you know maybe you're not doing the right things. Maybe you need to rethink your strategy. Um, paid platforms there's a ton of places to pay um, for you know advertising traffic uh, Google's obviously number one I would really um, try and find one of these channels to become successful on um, if you can make one of these channels successful for you that's a, a big win and a lot of companies really struggle to be successful with um, pay-per-click advertising so I would really um, urge you to choose one of these platforms, whether it's display or remarketing is another great one where you market to people who have already been to your site um, to come back to your site. Um, but I would find one one of these paid platforms to and, and, and try and make them successful before trying to do all of them. And, and don't give up too quickly. A lot of companies will try it, maybe try it for a couple months and then just give up. But really, they didn't do the right adjustments to the cost per click or they didn't um, you know, try different ads enough, and so they gave up too quickly. So don't don't give up too quickly at all. Um, and uh, consider using something like WordStream or some sort of software to help you. Email marketing is huge. I mean, it's probably got the highest ROI, but the problem is it's it's obviously not easy to build up a, a large email list. But um, there are a lot of things you can do. Segmentation is a big one. Make sure you're segmenting your emails, not just blasting it to everyone. Um, so that the emails you send out are relevant. Um, and keep your emails succinct as possible. Um, you don't want to, you know, drag on. You want to make it simple to the point and, and actionable so that they're going to to your site from your email and maybe buying something. Um, so, you know, here's some examples. And, and try and brand or, or theme, you know, create a theme for your email so that um, it's clear that they're coming from a legitimate business like yours. Like your, um, like yours, that you're trying to bring them to your e-commerce site, and it's not just some sort of spam email. So I think if there's a nice theme or design to your email, um, that that can also go a long way because people will trust those emails a lot more than just something that looks looks very simple and text-based and and not visual. Um, referral traffic is you know traffic coming from other other sites. Um, so partnerships are a great way to do that. Uh, getting backlinks, obviously, is, is the main way to do that. And what's great about getting, if you can focus on getting more referral traffic, it will most likely help your SEO because those backlinks will, you know, are a big part of Google's algorithm. So um, the great thing about referral traffic is that building it up basically helps your SEO in tandem. So I almost consider SEO and referral traffic kind of to go hand in hand. So it's something to um, to definitely put put attention and focus on because it will also help your SEO traffic most likely. Um, so a great way to do this is to use something like Open Site Explorer um, or look at your referral traffic on Google Analytics and see see where those uh, see where that traffic's coming from and Open Site Explorer can tell you some of the links that are coming back to your site. There's other ones, other other places where you can see the backlinks. Um, so um, you might n notice a trend of the type of sites that are linking back to you, and maybe you can make do do some of the things that got you those backlinks in the first place, and continue to do them to to get more backlinks. Um, so once you've kind of built up a traffic acquisition strategy, you want to start converting that traffic to sales. Um, so you know there's a lot of um, platforms to utilize for conversion optimization. Um, but really take a look at at as many as you can, and, and find one that you think will help you because they can be really, really useful as far as testing different strategies. 
Um, so, you know, Optimizely is probably the most well-known. Crazy Egg is a great one for seeing the heat map and the way that people interact with your website. So just experiment with some of these different platforms and see which one you, you like or you think will be most useful to you. Um, and then I would really try and uh, test the different pages on your site. Home page is a big one. You know, if you could reduce your bounce rate from 40 to 25 percent, that's a that's a huge win. Uh, another one is checkout. Like if the checkout process, if you can double the rate of people checking out on your site, that's also going to obviously massively increase your conversion rates. Um, shipping as well. Uh, a lot of people don't complete transactions because they don't like the shipping options. So uh, just to go back to that, these are some great ways to to test, you know, great places to test on your site as far as improving conversions. Um, so the average conversion rate is 2 to 4%, but don't be average. I mean, there's, you know, it's definitely possible to get to the 5 or 6% range. And, I, you know, we have some customers who have hit those 6 or 7% ranges. So it, it can be done, and I just I wouldn't get complacent and, and just keep keep trying. It's, it's, it's a long... It's a long process to get to that point, but it, but it can be done. So don't don't settle for the two percent conversion rate. Is kind of the moral of this this slide. Um, so this is an example of Crazy Egg. Um, so you can see, you know, where customers are kind of like where their mouse is on the site, and this will help you kind of think about, you know, maybe these areas could be improved, or maybe these areas no one's really going to them, you know. Do we even need them, or what? Maybe there's something we can do to make them better, more engaging. So, um, some of these conversion optimi optimization tools can really make a big difference as far as thinking about what to do to improve your website. Um, so, when it comes to replatforming, because um, that's a big topic, you know, am I on the right platform? There's really three main ways to improve your your sales, and I talked about visits, the main traffic channels. You know, that's obviously going to be a big one that people always want to improve. Conversion rate is another one. And then average order value is something not that people kind of forget about. Um, so you really want to not forget about average order value because it is something that can be improved. Um, so when it comes to replatforming, if, you know, this is a great model. If you look at this model, you can pretty much figure out based off, you know what you think the up you know what the uplifts are going to be from the re the new platform you know you can basically determine whether it's going to be profitable or not to replatform so increasing average order value as i talked about it's the one that i didn't really cover yet it's something not to forget about uh, it can it can really go a long way as far as um you know improving your your total sales so don't forget about uh, maybe try upsells or cross sells. A lot of people don't even have upsells or cross sells, and that's a great way to improve average order value. Um, free shipping over you know fifty dollars or whatever it is. I mean, you know if you're not utilizing that, I highly suggest doing so. Um, if you look at any of the major e-commerce sites, they usually have some sort of shipping promotion to get people to to buy more. Um, and then uh, loyalty and rewards. You know, if people know that they're getting rewards points, maybe they're more likely to to spend more. So there's a ton of things to think about when it comes to being successful with e-commerce in uh, 2015. Uh, you know, I just quickly covered some of the big topics, uh, and obviously I didn't go super deep into any of them because there's so there's so, each one of those slides probably could be its own own slideshow by itself. Um, but some of the key takeaways are integrations are a big thing to to make you more efficient um, and, and something that are very important to think about when when choosing a platform. Um, definitely look at all the traffic channels, think about them, invest in all of them if possible. Uh, maybe prioritize the ones that are most beneficial to you, but but don't neglect any of them completely. Um, and then test different strategies. That's a big thing for improving conversion rates. Um, focus on mobile responsive design or, or making your site user-friendly on all the different devices. That's going to be critical now and m even more so in the future. And then make sure that you've thought about the right platform for your needs and, and have a great design and development process for that platform. Um, and then, you know, you're probably want to thinking about, you know, omni-channel, how, how am I get my products in as many different places as possible for my customers? Um, and then don't forget about average order value because, um, you know, it's, it's great to try and increase visits and conversion rates, but you may hit a tipping point where it's really tough to get beyond where you are, but the average order value might be a place that that has room to grow. Um, and so conversion rates 
you know, obviously, obviously matter. Um, but don't don't just settle for two percent because you know four or five six percent is is achievable, and, I, and I've seen it I've seen it done before. So um, don't don't settle in that in that respect. So yep, I hope this was helpful. Um, you know, this was just a brief overview of e-commerce in 2015. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at Trellis uh, for any more information. Thank you.